Gotcha. Hello everyone, and welcome to another Monster in the World video, this is the Game Economist, and today I'm going to be showing you a counter build for fighting Kul'v Tiroth on the PC. We're going to start out by talking about the strategy here, right? Let's give you the too long don't read version. Essentially, Kul'v Tiroth, the fight is broken into four parts, stages 1, 2, 3, and 4. You know you're in a new stage when she moves to a new part of the map. Now the first three parts of the fight, what you can do is you can use thunder ammo against her big golden mantle. She wears like a golden coat and it's very weak to thunder ammo, okay? The thunder ammo is a long range ammo type. It hits the body, it pierces, and it travels down the body, procking for damage multiple times as it travels through the body. Kov Taroth is extremely weak to thunder in stages one, two, and three. However, in stage four, she's more like a regular monster and you can use pretty much any damage type that you prefer. So we're gonna have a separate build just for stage four. Both builds will be light bogan builds and this is pretty much the method that I use for fighting Kov Taroth, so you know it's good because I've been farming her for a very long time. Starting with the gun, I've chosen the Lightning Blitz 3. It's a pretty easy gun to access and it's going to deal extra damage with the Thunder Ammo because it has the Rapid Fire attribute. Anytime an ammo type has the Rapid Fire attribute, it is basically, you can think of it as like getting bonus damage from that ammo, but you have to land all three parts of the shot, which is pretty easy with a little bit of practice. When you're taking a look at the build, notice I have two pieces of the Rathalos armor set, Rath Soul Male Beta, Rathalos Van Braces. That's going to give you the extremely important critical element skill. Uh, basically, it says when you land a critical shot on your opponent, you're going to get bonus damage. And that's the reason we build Maximum Might and Critical Eye. Those are going to raise your affinity. It's going to increase your chance of getting a critical shot. And then, you know, Critical Element will proc at that point. And you're going to get the extra damage. Notice we also have the two levels of Thunder Attack. You only need two levels of Thunder Attack, despite the fact that it lets you raise to level five. If you test it out in the training room, you'll notice that not only does it get diminishing returns, but it completely drops off all benefits after three, I believe. I think you can take it to three if you want. I, I think the third the third level of it is barely any difference, which is why you don't worry about it. You also notice because I went with the Rathalos Van Braces that you're getting two levels of fire resist. I've added one more fire resist decoration onto the build. I really feel like that's gonna help you guys if you've never fought her before. There's a lot of fire. <laughs> In fact, the greatest chance you have of failing the match is whenever she uses one of her fire moves, they're all pretty deadly. Uh, her other moves, her physical attacks, are fairly predictable. It is very straightforward. Critical eye, fire resistance, free element ammo up in order to hold more ammo. Part breaker, right, we can't forget part breaker. That is a priority skill on this build. Essentially, your job in stages one, two, and three of the fight is to shoot her golden coat and break it over and over again. Okay, so you break apart and she'll either shed the whole coat or she'll go underground and fix it. But your job either way is to just keep breaking parts off of it. And that's why Part Breaker is so incredibly important in stages one, two, and three. Now in stages four, we're actually not going to build Part Breaker. I've been told by players over and over again, Part Breaker doesn't affect breaking the horns off of her. Ironically, it doesn't affect breaking the horns off of her. Instead, I'm told in stage four, she has a health threshold. All you have to do is surpass that and her horns will pop off. So that's why we have a second build and you won't see Part Breaker on the second build. Now before we go to the other build, we have to finish out a few more details of this one. First of all, if you want to talk about augmenting the Lightning Blitz, I recommend two levels of affinity and one empty decoration slot, in which point I would fill that with another level of Critical Eye, okay? Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about health to regen. If you want to talk about equipment, notice that I've brought the Fireproof Mantle as well as Affinity Booster, and you'll use Affinity Booster to make sure more of your shots are criticals. Okay, damage gets you through things quickly in this fight. For the mods on Lightning Blitz, you're gonna want three levels of recoil, okay? That's gonna allow you to shoot faster, and that's really important here. Lastly, let me talk about two guns to keep your eyes open for. If you get either of them, you can just replace Lightning Blitz with that gun. If you get the Rarity 8 Terrath Blitz Pierce, that is a direct upgrade to the Lightning Blitz, okay? So you'll just jump over to that. Your other option, on the heavy bowgun side, if you get the Terra Assault Magma, that is also going to be better than Lightning Blitz. So keep your eyes open for either of those guns and just swap over if you happen to unlock them. Next on screen, I'm going to be showing you the loadout that I'm using for my items. This is a really important part, right? Because 
you need to be able to go back to your tent and refill on ammo if you run out. There's a few things to take away from this setup. First of all, it's set up for both weapons. I have it set up for the Lightning Blitz as well as the other build, which will be Devil's Madness. Notice that you have the Thunder Ammo, Paralysis Ammo, Sticky Ammo, and everything you need to craft more of what you see, except for the Paralysis Ammo, I guess. You'll get like, when you fight her in Stage 4, I recommend paralyzing her at least one time, just once and then getting back to sticky ammo. So we'll talk more about that. Another really important tip here is you're gonna to wanna to start cultivating the thunderbugs because they're what you use for building the thunder ammo. And what you're gonna find out is as you farm Kulf Taroth, you run out of these guys really fast. So get a head start, cultivate these guys ahead of time, and that way you're gonna have a lot more of them by the time you're ready to fight Kulf Taroth and you're not gonna run out, okay? So you'll notice I have thunderbugs, Slice ammo, which you can use that. I, I just brought it because you can use it. And of course, the blast nut, which is used for the sticky ammo. And that's really important, as well as the gunpowder level three, which is used to craft more of the sticky ammo level three. Okay, really not that complicated. Also, you can see all the barrel bombs. Those are gonna be used for crafting extra barrel bombs. It turns out Kulf Taroth takes extra damage from barrel bombs, so if you want to just go crazy on those, I, I, many of you probably don't want to do that because they're very expensive to maintain high quantities of barrel bombs and constantly be using them. So I can do that just because I can afford it. I have a, you can, as you can see, I have a lot of zenny. Uh, but you guys may want to be a little more conservative and just save your barrel bombs for if somebody puts Kulf Taroth to sleep in stage four, okay? So that, but everything you need in order to craft more is there on screen. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the radio menu as well. You can see I can craft all these things right in my radio menu, and that's super duper important. Also, just a tip, remember, when you're editing your radio menu, you have to save the item loadout in order to save the radio menu, okay? That's, that's something a lot of new players don't know. Most of you probably already know it at this point, but I figure I should throw it out there anyways. Now we're ready to look at the second build, and this is going to be a Devil's Madness build. Luckily, you guys have access to the Devil's Madness. is one of the best light bow guns in the game. It always has been. And you can see what I've done here is I've gone with an artillery setup. Uh, well, let's go down the list of skills. We have health boost and fire resistance. Those are there to keep you alive. In fact, the reason we're going with the sticky ammo build is because I know it's so efficient, you guys would have enough of those open slots to build health boost and fire resistance. Because here's the reality. If you reach stage four of the Kulf Taroth fight, your chances of dying go up. That's the trickier part of the fight, and especially if you're new, you're probably not going to be ready for it. So going artillery sticky ammo is so efficient at building damage that you have all these extra slots left over and you can build defense. Then we have the free element ammo up skill. That's there to give you an extra bullet in your clip when it comes to using the sticky ammo level three. Of course, three levels of artillery. Notice I've used the charm slot for that. I know because most of you haven't unlocked three artillery decorations. So we're using the charm slot for that. And then finally, the last important skill on the set is we get two levels of special ammo boost. That's going to increase the damage of your wyvern blast. Okay, so you're not just using sticky ammo, you're using wyvern blast as well. Let me give you one more tip about this build. You can actually remove those three vitality decorations and put in something like Slugger instead if you want to deal extra KO damage to Kulf Taroth, which will probably lead to an extra knockdown for your team. But uh, I don't really feel like that's necessary. Just focus on dealing damage to her, shoot her anywhere you can, but especially in the head. And that vitality will keep you alive as opposed to giving your team an extra KO. It's up to you to make that decision. Okay, and then for the uh, equipment, You'll notice you don't need affinity booster in this case, so it's fireproof mantle and the health booster. You'll notice for the mods, I've gone triple reload. This is going to quickly allow you to reload your level three sticky ammo. And then finally for the augmentations, I've gone double health regen because sticky ammo is a really easy way to get your health back. And that's it. What you're gonna do is when Kulv Taroth sheds her armor, you can actually chase her down a little further using your lightning blitz. And at that point, use paralysis on her, right? Get your paralysis proc out. You can shoot her with the slice ammo at that point. You can get some, a little bit of slice ammo damage on her. And then once she's done being paralyzed, use a far caster to get back out of the fight. 
and go pick up the Devil's Madness. And with the Devil's Madness, you can put her to sleep one time and barrel bomb her, okay? So you, you essentially get two forms of crowd control right there. And then with the KOing on the sticky ammo, it's very likely or possible for you to get a total of two KOs, at least one KO. And realistically, your team will get one knockdown from her taking enough damage as well. So we're talking about probably four crowd controls on Kul Taroth in stage four. All right, and that's everything for the builds. It genuinely will make the fight a lot easier if you try them out. Highly recommended. And over the next couple of days, maybe I'll do another counter build. We'll see where it goes. All right, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.